Hey, yeah, what's up? This disciple Marcello Occurrence rain back up in this anti Illuminati all day, anti telepathy all day, anti America all day, and everybody with him. Yeah. So, this message basically is going to be about forbidding sex. Forbidding sex happens in a lot of culture. You know, it may be <clears throat> usually it's. Um, it might be laws, it might be um, status sometimes, you know, for instance, maybe, you know, someone in a different country is, is royalty, basically, and they're having sex with some someone who is a, a person that's the equivalent of being on food stamps. That's like forbidden. Or it may be religion, two different religions, that's forbidden. And these people have sex or they're in love. And then you may have <clears throat> even even um, in different countries. See, America doesn't know about this. You may have two. You might have uh, two cousins that's having sex that's in love with each other. And that's forbidden sex. You see what I'm saying? They call they call it polygamy here. They are like it's weird here, but it's not weird in other countries. It's for, it's forbidden sex. You know, you may have two cousins, you may have an uncle and a niece, something like that. And in some cases, they may be literally in love. You know, in the Bible, you can even see, uh, I think it was Jacob that was with uh, Rachel, and that was his cousin. Anyway, whoever was with, who was with Rachel... And kept working like for they worked for seven years one time, then they worked for seven seven more years, and that was the dad. And that was uh, uh, Rachel's dad that would kept working the guy. But that was her cousin who that was working. Whoever it was was her cousin that was working to to be her husband, and her dad was cool with it. That's in the Bible. They were cousins. This guy was working for her dad to have her in marriage. And that was his cousin he was working for. And the dad was cool with letting his, his uh, nephew have his daughter. I'm trying to show you, America is so retarded because... They're hypocrites in a lot of ways, especially with 40 states allowing children to have sex. I mean, they can't talk anything about pedophilia. Because my thing is, the first thing they want to say when you mention this, what, what other countries do. The difference is, other countries do not contradict them, what they have said. If they set the age of consent for sex at 16, like Russia, Russia is not witch hunting people. They're not going out and saying... You know you should only be with adults. But then they got the age set at 16. They're not doing that. You don't hear them say nothing. You do not hear them talking about it. But in your culture in America, why people are so uh, angry with you is because you're steady talking about adults and stuff. You steady are talking about adults having sex with adults, but you're allowing a children to have sex with adults. That's your laws. That's the smoke and beef people have with you. Is you're a big hypocrite. You're all on TV showing family units and showing and talking about protecting the children and what priests are doing. You're talking about what Catholic priests are doing, but you got forty, but you got forty states that allow children to have sex, but you still stuck on what a Catholic priest did in the sixties, in the seventies. You quick to hate a Catholic priest, but not hate your your country that put forty states with that are allowing children to have sex. So you hate who you hate the most, the Catholic priests, or you hate the government? <laughs> Let's keep it a hundred. Yeah, yeah, I told you this is a campaign. You hate the Catholic priests, right? By the way, I'm not a Catholic. By the way, I'm a Christian. Big difference. Two different, different belief systems here. But you quit to hate the Catholic, but you don't hate. The government of America that has said 40 states that allows children to have sex. You don't hate that, though. 
That's what I'm saying. That's hypocrisy, man. Nobody ain't feeling that. You, you're ready to crucify a Catholic priest, but you're not ready to crucify the American government that set the age of consent for sex under the age of 18 in 40 states, which is the majority of the country. But you're ready to hang. You're ready to hang and lynch the the Catholic priest. No, I think I think that's hypocrisy. That's what I think. I think that's why everybody hates you. Because you choose your adversaries. Like I always say this, America choose convenient adversaries, but they would never choose the right adversary. The biggest and strongest adversary, you never see them fight. Every part of the American community does this. The black people do it. The white people do it. And the whole American community chooses convenient, weak enemies who they think they can beat. They thought they could beat me and it didn't work. I tore them a new butthole. Now they're walking around here with two holes for men and three holes for women. <laughs> Boom. I play no games. You are not finna play with me, buddy. When you got 40 states allowing children to have sex. If I was a Catholic priest, that's what I would be telling them. Shoot. I'm not saying it's right, but hey, bro, you got 40 states that allow children to have sex. You can't be seriously talking to me. You can't be seriously trying to crucify me. Okay, so, but back to the, the, the what I'm talking about. There's forbidden sex. And... Usually the, the, the forbidden sex happens or forbidden love too. Forbidden love or forbidden sex. It happens at, um, it happens usually young. You know, you may, you go into different cultures. There's so many stories. There's probably even famous stories of forbidden love and sex that you can look up online. You probably can find ancient stories of forbidden sex and, and forbidden love. And and um, this this helps us understand human nature better concerning young sex, young forbidden love, sexuality among youth. Because one thing we cannot stop is human interactions sexually. It's nothing. It's nothing you can do about them. All you can do is hope that your children will grow into mature, responsible human beings when it comes to sexuality, where they do the things that make common sense. But as children, you don't anything can happen because they're, it's an unmature, it's an immature brain, it's an undeveloped brain. So you can't act like someone that has an undeveloped brain should make developed brain decisions. It's nothing wrong with them. They're not retarded. They're children. Their brain is undeveloped. So when you're dealing with a creation that has an undeveloped brain, it isn't fully mature. Just imagine the sexuality of that in that creation. But yet they try when, but see, this is where I'm getting to my punchline because in this culture, if individuals have forbidden sex, which is, wait, let's just say kissing cousins. That's where you get the, this term was made because cousins was kissing. They didn't say they were uh, pedophiles. They didn't say they were uh, polygamous. It's, it's a term for kissing. Is Kissing cousins is a term because it was common enough for a term. Okay, so if you have two cousins that's doing things, this is not, you can't put this in the perspective of um, <clears throat> pedophilia. That's a whole different subject. Just like, you know, if in a different country you have two cousins, you know, messing around, playing around as kids, this is not pedophilia. This is what America doesn't understand. No one, no person yelling and yelping their mouth can make it pedophilia either. Okay? These are two kids that's kissing cousins. That's where you get the term from. Okay? If the term was made, we all agreed on that. 
on this. That meme was pretty common. This is not something that's taboo and horrific. You shouldn't be shocked. If somebody tell you about kidding, kissing cousins. This is forbidden love. This is forbidden sex in your culture. That's what it is. It's not pedophilia. Pedophilia is someone that is an adult that is preying on children. That's what pedophilia is. So someone that will go and try to, like, say, for instance, rat out their cousin and be like, well, we were messing around with his kids. You were kissing cousins then. That's what it was. You can't wait later on in life and then be like, well, that person is a pedophile. No, that is not a pedophile. You have been indulging in forbidden love and forbidden sex and forbidden acts of sex. That's what that is. That's not pedophilia. I got to set the record straight because there are many different divisions within sexuality. And you can't just 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 stamp any kind of uh, definition on acts of sex of, of sex. You can't just be like, well, that's pedophilia. That's pedophilia. That's all pedophilia. No, 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 no. No, you can't do that, especially when you have two children. It's no way. Unfortunately, we would not like children to have sex, but they're not pedophiles because they're having sex. Two children are not pedophiles because they're having sex. That's either kissing cousins, forbidden love, forbidden sex, or, or forbidden acts of sex. That's what it is. And you should expect that, like I said, from undeveloped brains. If they have undeveloped brains, then how are they going to make developed brain decisions? That's why you're constantly correcting your children. That's why you're constantly beating their butts. Because they're in need of di uh, they're, they're, they're in need of being taught the proper way. Okay? So, you can't let I'm telling you, people that you guys out there, that anybody out there that has been, that have a sexual history of forbidden love or forbidden sex or you've had forbidden acts of sex, don't let America with their hypocritical, hypocritical self try to tell you that you're a pedophile. No, you've had acts of perfid, forbidden, per, uh, excuse me, forbidden sex. You've had acts of of uh, forbidden love. You've you've had a kissing cousin. A lot of a lot of people, more people than you will be you will be surprised at how many people, famous, rich, and poor, and everything in between, that have had forbidden love and forbidden sex and forbidden acts of sex, and they get thrown into. <laughs> By into uh, the, the big box of pedophilia. When you can go to many cultures and you can even go to the Bible and see, like I was telling you, Rachel, um, her cousin working for her for years to have her working for her. Wow. They were cousins. OK, but see, this is another part when I'm telling you how the American Christians are just so soft core, you know, and in Christianity is hardcore. They don't talk about these real issues. They don't talk about these things. And it's a lot of people walking around in condemnation, letting their family members or letting society tell them that you're a pedophile. And you just have lived, you just have sexual um, experiences that was forbidden love. A lot of you, that's what it is. You've had forbidden love, forbidden sex, or forbidden acts of sex. Okay? And that is not pedophilia. Sex is not that simple. And acts of sex is not that simple. And definitions of sex is not that simple. Okay? So you got to stop letting people try to lynch you and hang you. And try to tell you you something you're not. No, you got to get people up off you. I'm sorry that you didn't experience it. But I experienced sex at a young age. That's what you got to tell people. Now, you know, people found me attractive, attractive at a young age. I was having sex before I was 18. Marilyn Monroe, she got married when she was 16. 
Marilyn Monroe was married. That's who y'all idolize. That's who y'all idolize. That's, she's all over y'all pictures, all everywhere in your country. I've seen her in San Francisco. I've seen her in, in, on the East Coast. All kind of pictures everywhere. She was having sex at 16. She was married at 16. Full-blown sex. Some people are just, and you see how beautiful she was. So see, she couldn't even make it to 18 before somebody found her sexually attractive. You got to look at people. You got to, because a lot of these ugly people, and I got to say it for what it is, all these ugly people, that, that, that they're just not attractive. How can I say it? I just put it like that. They don't attract people like you do. Okay, so you've been attracting people since you've been a kid. So they, they'll look at you and say, well, I don't understand that because you're ugly. I'm just keeping it 100. So nobody found you attractive till you turned 25. Okay? Nobody found you attractive. You bloomed into who you are now. But before that, though, you were ugly. So now you got this chip on your shoulder, this pious, self-righteous chip on your shoulder be, uh, concerning sex with, with children because you didn't have sex with children because children found you to be ugly and picked on you. Okay? So it's easy for you to sit back, whether it be cop, whether it be FBI, whether it be everyday person, rich or poor. It's easy for you to sit back and judge those with a long sexual history because you were ugly. You were not attractive. Like the Bible puts it, you were not fair among your brothers and sisters. You were not the fairest of your, of your family. So it's easy for you to sit back and speculate and play a hate, really what it is, <laughs> sometimes, hating on people that had a long, had sexual history before they were adults. And I'm not saying it's healthy, but I'll tell you one thing. People say that people that were messed around when they were children by, I guess, adults, I'll just throw this in here and say this, they turn out to be pedophiles. So if they had an adult touch them when they was a child, they turn around and do the same thing. Uh, I don't know about that. But I, what I, but what I think is true is that when people have a, a sexual history, when they're children, by the time they become an adult, I don't think they have a desire to be with children because they experienced being with a child as a child. I'm not gonna say it's out their system to think about children, but they have had sex with a child, but they was a child too, though. This is the part they leave out. You were a child as well. So it's like you don't go back to what you've experienced and you keep moving forward, you know? And some people that never experienced it are the ones that's curious. They never had sex with someone underage, even being underage. They never did. They had sex with adults only. So now you, for whatever reason, I'm not saying, I don't know, you know, maybe you have to, you, you have these fantasies and thoughts and you struggle and you even become weird towards children because you never had sex as a child. I mean, you got a lot of different divisions out there. You got a lot of people, man. You have to read between the lines and you have to discern and you with each person. Because people are quick to say this and that and the third, and they may actually regret that they never did anything as, as like as a kid. And like even in high school, even in middle school, they may have been the person that never got any sex at all or anyone attracted to them at all. I had girls attracted to me all through from from from, the, from all through school. I never liked a girl. I never liked a girl being infatuated with me. I've always had some girl showing some level of infatuation. So I've always had like a healthy, you know, situation with, with, with humans, you know. You know, and some people, they never had that, though. They never had it, you know, and, and it's just and then they went into being a cop or they went into being in the FBI. 
and you got this you got this bitter chip on your shoulder and you that ugly person with the big ears that never got any play you know what i'm saying you never had any sex so it's easy for you to pick on the marilyn monroe's of the world it's easily it's easy for you to pick on the sex symbols the princes of the world the people that's like prince it's easy for you to pick on them because you never your sexuality your sex life was really nothing then you got married and it wasn't even good you know so you, you're just like this miserable woman that's on her that's going through menstruation forever <laughs> A woman that's on a period forever, be man or woman. You're like the, a, a person on the rag forever, you know, because you never experience sexuality. You know what I'm saying? Like the average everyday person. The average everyday person has sexuality to talk about even as kids. You know how I know? Because I've dated a lot of women. And all the women I've dated, they always have stories Dating back to their childhood. How, how is it I'm dating all these women and they all have stories from their childhood about some form of sexuality? This tells me that it's pretty normal. While, while these people that never experienced, this is who you got to watch out for. You got to look at the enemy. You got to look at the people that's trying to make you out to be some weirdo. Because you check your enemies. Look at them good. Look at their face. Because these are the people that never had these experiences. They are walking around like they're on, their, on the rag. And it's easy for them to point out what they think you've done that's weird. Because inwardly, they are bitter that they never really had a sex life. So you may have had acts of forbidden sex Forbidden love, even. Or you actually may have been in love with one of your uh, cousins or someone from a different religion or something. And people would try to uh, to they would try to penalize you for this and make you suffer for what you've experienced. And you can't let them do that because nine out of ten, if you understood and you went through it, then you wouldn't be witch hunting somebody else. You don't see no no beautiful people, pretty people acting like they don't understand that. Look at for, look at it for what it is. Look at it for what it is, because most beautiful people, most attractive people have been through some type of sexuality as a child. Most of them have. I'm sorry to tell you, they did not make it out of childhood without having sex or some form of sex. So they understand. If you tell me about something you did, I totally understand because what happened is you was found attractive at a young age. Okay? It ain't like you went out hunting for it. <laughs> I mean, come on. These the, the, the attraction was mutual. As children, when you're having these things, these these acts that you have with as a child the attractions were mutual and people want to try to act like it was just you when the attraction was mutual you can't let people play you like that like you some monster but they was feeling you they were feeling you too though they was coming and pursuing you too though it was mutual okay and and if it wasn't and you were still under the age of 18 it was an act of forbidden sex. If you was under 18, you were not a child. That's the bottom. I mean, an adult. You either are an adult or a child. Like I tell people. So if you were a child, they can't penalize you from the things you did as a child as to penalize an adult. They can't penalize you as an adult. Like for something you did as a child, as an adult, like as if you were an adult and you wasn't. No, don't let nobody play you like that, man. You had acts of forbidden sex, acts of forbidden or, or forbidden love. You had kissing cousins, and they trying to act like you was some kind of monster. No, bruh. Don't let nobody play you like that. Okay, you were were you a child? Was the other person a child? Then you're good. Okay? That's the bottom line. 
That's the bottom line. You were, if you were both children, okay, a child with a child, it wasn't an adult with a, with a child, it was two children, then you're good. And even if it, you know, that situation or forbidden love went over into adulthood in some form or fashion, you, you still both are adults. This is this is stuff that the, the, uh, the America acts like they can't talk about. And that's why you got people with all these skeletons in their closets and all, all this stuff going on and, and being misunderstood and outcast and all kind of things. And then fam certain family members going crazy and acting like they some type of victim. And they've been just a person that was a, re a recipient of an act of forbidden uh, of a forbidden sex act. They was a recip recipient of a forbidden sex act. Two children. Both were not. They both were children. Then you. It does, I don't want to hear anything else. I don't care about any laws when they both were children. When they both were under the age of eighteen, especially when you got forty states that allows children to have sex with adults. We don't want to hear nothing. You up there letting children have sex with adults? Then you don't understand when two children do something. Nah, you tripping, bro. You, you ain't got no choice but to let it go because you sitting up here letting children have sex with adults and you talking about something two children did. Nah, it doesn't work like that, bro. <laughs> That's forbidden. Acts of forbidden sex act or forbidden love or kissing cousins. OK. And that's what that is. They two children. That's what it is. It wasn't an adult with a child. It was two children. 